So a question came in this morning, uh, and I'll go ahead and read it. I had a question for you. I'm in 1 John 3.17. It talks about brothers and sisters in need and how if we have things and see them in need, we should help them. I understood that brothers and sisters are those in Christ. Is that correct? I'm just trying to understand the context for this and if we should be trying to help everyone who is in need because I'm trying to do that, but I want to make sure that I understand this scripture before applying it. Am I taking this too literal? Okay, first question is, what is scripture referring to when it says brothers and sisters? When the scriptures refer to brothers and sisters, they're referring to those you've discerned to actually be in the body of Christ. These are those who speak on the authority of the one who sent them. These are those who bear good fruit. These are those who are bearing, who are no longer sinning. So it's not like this is going to be a person who is going to take what you're giving them and use it inappropriately for sin or to steal from you. It's not that kind of person. Brothers and sisters are those who are bearing good fruit and you've tested the spirit to make sure that they're in him. I uploaded a video a little while ago and I talked a bit about, about how to discern the fruit and test the spirit because a lot of times we have ideas in which we want to give more chances than uh, are really necessary. And the problem is that when we do that, that we end up giving our pearls to swine they trample all over it and we end up getting chewed up and spit out. And so I've been going through a situation over the last few days in which I had decided to give the benefit of the doubt. And I was, you know, really, I just didn't want to write this person off. And uh, it was a mistake. I should have dusted my feet. I should have rebuked this person and not given them the time of day because the spirit in them wasted my time, turned to attack me, and then went out and slandered me. That was the thanks I got for two hours of my free time and many videos and, you know, like, it's just, I'll do anything for those who are from Christ. I will do anything for the body, but we are not called to do anything for people who are outside the body and trample our pearls like swine. And that's exactly what this person did. Not only that, but they started taking my videos and rewriting my videos for their own platform taking what God is doing in me and rewriting it to make it more palatable for the world. Well, let me tell you something. God will contend with those who contend with his. You know why? Because what that person is messing with is what God is doing. I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to worry about defending myself. I don't need to worry about any of that because this person does not know what she is playing with. It is not going to turn out well for her. I don't have to do anything. God will take care of it. The only thing I do is turn back to the body and give to you what God tells me to give. I keep keep my hand to the plow. I keep doing what I've been doing. God takes care of the rest. Why? Because when you're in his ministry, why would he not take care of it? It's his own ministry. So yes, remember that the early church came together. They took care of one another. And when Paul was taking up collections, he wasn't taking them up for him. He was taking them up for the body so that everybody was provided for and everybody came together and there wasn't too much and there wasn't too little. Everyone just had what they needed. No one was living like the pagans and being concerned about their own empire and blah, blah, blah. None of that was going on. So yes, you are correct. Brothers and sisters are those who are in Christ. And we take care of one another. If one of us is in need, all of us is in need. What affects one part of the body affects the entire body. No one should be rich and no one should be poor. God said that from the very beginning. In the Old Testament, there should be no poor among you. You take care of each other. You loan out and you don't, you know, when that year of freedom is coming where someone is released from their debts and they're released from slavery if they had sold themselves into slavery... When that year of freedom comes, you don't say in, you know, in a wicked heart, well, this person's asking to borrow from me, but that year of freedom is coming up and I'm not going to get my return. No, we're supposed to trust God to take care of us because we have obeyed what he has told us to obey. And the community is supposed to keep one another accountable so that there would have been no evil in Israel because God said, purge the evil from Israel. And we're supposed to be holding to that standard today. We don't allow predators in. We don't allow people to speak on the authority of the world or of Satan in the body. We kick them out. We get them out. None of this all-inclusive church. God's church is an exclusive church. 
It is exclusive to those who love him and are speaking a message by his spirit. Now that said, there are some other contexts of scripture. We need to take the entire scripture together because that is the entire context of God's heart and what he wants from us. So let's go to Matthew 5, verse 38. You've heard it said, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. All right, that's a hard message. Let's go to some different translations and see if there's anything we should be understanding. Let's go to the OGB. And the one asking you to give and the one wishing to borrow from you, from these do not turn away. That was the OGB. Now let's go to the KGV. Give to him that asketh thee and from him that would borrow of thee, not thou turn, turn not thou away. So if you have and someone is in need, yeah, you should give to them. Does this mean to be a dumb dum No. God said, don't give your pearls to swine. Does this mean that if someone is going to go smoke crack with the money that you give them, and you know that, you know they're going to go do that, do you give to them? Well, I don't know. Would you give someone a knife to harm themselves? I mean, that doesn't really make sense. We need to use discernment. We need to use discernment by the Spirit. There are certain people that God would want us to give to, and we need to pray. We need to ask him as we go along, who do you want me to, who do you want me to give to? If you can see that someone is in need, ask God in every situation because the word is meant to be taken with God's spirit, not alone, not of our own understanding. Just ask God's spirit. There have been times where I've seen, seen someone outside of a, a grocery store, for example, or you know whatever kind of store that I was going to. I could see that they were in need. I could also see that they probably would have used the, the money that I gave them for drugs. So I asked them if they were hungry and I went in the store and I got food for them that they could kind of keep with them that didn't necessarily need refrigeration like peanut butter and bread and that sort of thing. And I brought it out to them. Stay with the Holy Spirit. Not everything has a template. You know, the, the Bible gives you some basic understanding of how we are to be and yet also... The Bible needs to be taken as a whole, and yet also the Bible is a living word because you're interacting, those words are interacting with the Spirit inside of you. And so we need to be interacting with the Spirit inside of us in order to understand what's written in the Word and how to go out and apply it into our lives. Now, I will tell you one thing, I don't give to organizations, period. I will not give to an organization, none. I don't care if it's a tax write-off for me. I really don't care about any of that because God is my provider and most of what I've given is not tax deductible. But I find these organizations, especially religious organizations, to be absolutely greedy and I will not give to them. I don't sucker into that. I like the fact that my good deeds are being done so that the other person can glorify their father in heaven. I find that a lot of, you know, I grew up in poverty. So having been the recipient of a lot of what is given in organizations, when you don't have that human interaction, you don't know how to appreciate it. There is an appreciation. I mean, you do appreciate and, and you do turn up to God if God is in you. However, it doesn't mean as much as when you're getting it from another human being. So I, I really don't like that these organizations are set, sort of controlling that and making it a business and designating it, removing the personal aspect and giving handouts rather than hand ups. People need to be held accountable and they need to feel like someone is helping them, not disabling them, that they are not beholden to a system that tells them how much money they can make. And if you make one penny above this, we're going to sanction your check. These systems are not good. They teach people to live in fear and they teach people to lie. So the relationship with another person, the conversation, the humanity, there's a lot more glory. The, the glory of God exists there more than it does in some organization. I mean, you hear this all the time, right? That people just priding themselves and patting themselves on the back for all the good, good, good that they've done. You know, I actually was introduced to counterfeit Christianity through a single parent ministry, uh, specifically single mother ministry. And they did this whole spa day for us. And, you know, it was so wonderful. And I felt really loved, really cared for in that ministry. 
And then one Mother's Day, the pastor decided to get up and give this horrific sermon degrading young mothers. It was like bizarre. And a lot of a lot of times people go into those organizations not because they have a heart for that population, but they actually go in in judgment over the very population. And they sort of fetishize in a demonic way that population. Look at Jim Caviezel, for example. Here's a guy who is, you know, he's a huge proponent of the Catholic Church, the biggest sex trafficking ring on the planet that's never held accountable, by the way. Huge proponent of the Catholic Church. Doing a movie on sex trafficking? Well, you going to mention the Catholic Church in there? You going to mention their involvement? Or are you just going to put this off on human beings like Jeffrey Epstein, who's dead? That is one of the biggest sex trafficking organizations. But guys, don't look behind the, don't look behind the curtain. If you are a proponent of that organization, you are fetishizing the things they do. And let me tell you something. The word says you'll be held accountable just as she will. The word says that people who remain in that harlot are going to bear in the sins and curses of the harlot. So that's biblical. You continue to be a proponent of that. You continue to remain in it. You continue to defend it. You'll go down with it. So I don't want to get too far away from the topic. The thing that I would say is I don't like those organizations. Stay in the church, remain in the church, take care of the church, help people with common sense, ask God what he would like you to do. If he's put it on your heart to do it, ask him if he would, you know, how he would like you to help. What gifts has he given you that he would, that he has given you for his glory? The other thing that I would tell you is when the Israelites were farming, for example, God told them, Don't glean to the edge when you're harvesting. Don't glean to the edge of your field. Leave some for the foreigner. So he does want others to be blessed through us as a church. I don't want to say only look after the church, but I do want to say use prudence. And the only way that you can use prudence and understanding and discernment is by God's Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening. Please discern this message with God.